Hi Luna, I welcome you on board this session. The topic of this session is airplane that is fixed wing aircraft, its configuration and various parts. It is entitled to the subject flight mechanics. The target audience for this session are gate aerospace aspirants, aerospace engineering and aeronautical engineering students. Basically, in this session we will be seeing about two different topics that is first one is airplane configurations and then we will move on to airplane parts. The previous lesson we did know about the classification of aircraft. The link to the previous section will be provided as YouTube cards in the right top corner that is this position. Let's start. What is airplane configuration? Before knowing about airplane configuration, we need to know what is an airplane and the difference between an airplane and an aircraft. Airplane is a subcategory of aircraft. That is, the fixed wing aircrafts are known as airplanes or aeroplanes. Configuration is nothing but a particular arrangement of parts or elements in a particular form or figure or combination. This forms a particular configuration. In specific, the airplane configurations are considered for gate aerospace perspective such that we need to know what is the configuration because they will just name the configuration and ask a specific question about it. Here, there are a list of nine different configurations of airplane starting from home built to military transport. Each one has its own uh, particular form of arrangement or a combination of parts which is specific to that configuration. Let's see about them in specific. From an overall perspective, these are the common configurations that can be seen around us. Land-based airplane. Here is an example of media that is antenna aircraft which is the largest aircraft of the world and this is a land-based airplane configuration. As we can see, the land-based airplane configuration has typical landing gears that is retractable and uh, the bottom portion isn't specifically designed for any purpose and it is common in perspective. So the next configuration is seaplane. From the configuration perspective of seaplane, here we can see that the bottom portion is replaced by a hull and we can see that uh, the engines are mounted specifically above to avoid uh, contact with water as seaplanes take off from water bodies. Amphibian plane. This is a combination of land and seaplane. Here we can see that the bottom portion or the undercarriage is fitted with some kind of hull portion that is it can be able to take off from sea. For the purpose of taking off from land-based uh, airports or landing strips or takeoff strips, the landing gear is kind of retractable version which is uh, hidden inside the hull and it is uh, dropped down for taking off and landing in land-based st landing strips. Conventional aircraft is a typical aircraft configuration that is it has a tail after the wing after the fuselage that is in the rear portion of the fuselage canard configuration are common in fighter jets because it provides additional maneuverability for the aircraft canards are nothing but the control surfaces which are attached in the forward portion of the fuselage in order to uh, obtain additional maneuverability Three surface airplane. In specific, we may not be knowing about three uh, surface airplane, but they are nothing but the airplanes with canard, a wing, and a tail that is horizontal tail surface. Typically, they will have three different surfaces uh, or uh, lateral surfaces for obtaining lift. First one is the canard, next the wing, and then the horizontal tail. Or the stabilizer. Flying wing aircraft uh, has a typical uh, triangular kind of body without tail that is the fuselage is integrated within the uh, wing section. 
pivoting oblique wing airplane. It is nothing but the airplane with a wing which isn't at a particular 90 degree angle or some particular angle. Instead, it is in some angled position that is it is placed in an oblique angle. So here is a typical example of a flying car configuration and uh, it has twin boom and this is a particular kind of configuration. So fuselage configuration, when we uh, learn about the configurations from the fuselage per perspective that is the configuration is based on the arrangement of fuselage or the design of fuselage. Conventional fuselage is the typical fuselage which we see around in commercial airplanes such as A320 or uh, Boeing 747 or most of the commercial airplanes or passenger crafts. Double fuselage airplanes have two fuselage that is they have uh, two uh, areas where the passengers can be seated or the payload can be carried and this is uh, a rare configuration and uh, the next one is double boom central fuselage. Uh, this is a typical example of a double boom central fuselage. We have the fuselage in the center and uh, it has twin boom that is boom is nothing but the uh, tail to uh, wing or fuselage attaching portion that is this is the boom structure so double boom it has twin boom structures the configurations can also be uh, based on engine type it can be either piston propeller engine turbo propeller engine turbo jet turbo fan or propeller fan engine engine integration airplanes can be configured based on the location of its engine so engines can be either in nacelles on the wing or on fuselage. Nacelles are nothing but these powder structures within which the engines are placed. So it can be either within the uh, nacelle that is under the wing or on the wing. So here we can see it is an under wing and here we can see that the engine inside the wing or inside the fuselage it is inside the uh, fuselage it is attached above the fuselage over here. And in fighter jets, we can see that it can be uh, either attached inside the wing or inside the fuselage. Inside the wing configuration is uh, very rare, but still there are prototypes and working models that are decommissioned model. One of the fighter aircraft from British Airways or uh, British uh, Air Force was having a configuration of buried wing. That is, uh, the engine was buried within the wing but it wasn't efficient so it was decommissioned airplanes can also be con configured based on the landing gear type that is either it is fixed or retractable landing gear here this is a typical example of fixed landing gear and uh, here we can see the landing gear can be retractable within the body this is retracted in order to obtain lesser drag the next configuration is uh, tailwheel or nose wheel landing gear the uh, landing gear can be either placed in the front that is below the nose or near the tail so this is a tail dragger configuration and this is a nose wheel landing gear it airplanes can also be configured based on the location of these landing gears that is either it is under the wing or inside the engine nacelle or in the fuselage this is the example of inside the fuselage or in fairings that is uh, the landing gears are separately uh, retracted or positioned within a fairing so this is the example of fairing or uh, sometimes it is attached below the fuselage now discussing about the airplanes configuration based on the type of wing we can be uh, seeing the following configurations that is it can be either cantilever cantilever wing is nothing but it is uh, fixed at one point and it is free at the other brace wing uh, the wing structure has a support from the fuselage uh, that is uh, you can say that uh, the wing is supported by a brace like this you could have seen in the world war airplanes but it isn't common now Still, Cessna and other kind of two-seater aircrafts use this base wing concept. 
high wing is where the wing is positioned above the fuselage low wing is where the wing is below the fuselage and the mid wing is where the wing passes through the fuselage in the middle portion straight wing is that the wing isn't swept back so this is an example of swept back and this is the example of swept forward and here we can see the wing is straight <coughs> so after swept wing is nothing but the wing is swept uh, in the backward direction is we back angle is provided forward sweep is that the wing is sweep back, uh, forward in the reverse to the sweep back configuration pivoting oblique wing is nothing but the wing is in placed uh, in a straight manner instead the wing is placed in some oblique angle it is very rare configuration and wing with or without in wing lights so these are known as wing lights and these are used to reduce the induced drag of an aircraft so here we can see the aircraft is with winglets and here these two airplanes are typical examples of aircraft without winglets so now discussing about the airplanes configuration based on the horizontal tail arrangement so this is the horizontal tail portion and uh, the opposite is the vertical tail portion so either the horizontal tail is placed on the fuselage here we can see this is the fuselage and the uh, horizontal tail is placed on the fuselage or on twin boom twin tail booms or uh, this is a typical example of uh, the horizontal tail being placed on twin booms boom number one and boom number two and uh, either it is having a t-tail configuration so the tail when the horizontal stabilizer is placed above the vertical tail it will have a t-tail configuration similar to this and v-tail configuration is common in fighter jets that is the tail horizontal tail is placed in kind of v-shaped structure so vertical tail this is a common example of vertical tail and it is the horizontal portion of the tail which is responsible for the yawing motion and uh, the first configuration is on the fuselage so the, here we see the fuselage and the tail is placed on the fuselage or on the twin, twin tail booms so here if the tail was placed in similar manner like this on the two booms boom number one and boom number two it would be in a twin tail a vertical tail configuration on each tip of the horizontal tail so in antenna media we did see that uh, each horizontal the, that is there was a horizontal tail and the vertical tail was positioned on the tips that is each tip of the horizontal tail that is it will be forming kind of h configuration of tail now moving on to the next portion of the concept the airplane parts as i said airplane will be having the fixed wing and uh, parts of it there are typically 40 lakhs parts in an airplane that is a commercial passenger craft but specifically we need to know about uh, these following 13 common parts so they will be having subsystems and uh, other systems supporting these parts that which uh, counts on for, to that amount these 13 are the main parts and we need to be able to uh, identify it on any kind of airplane so engine from the perspective of this aircraft the engine is placed in the forward portion of the aircraft and this is where the engine would be placed and uh, here the rotor is connected and we will be having a propeller over here which will be helping the aircraft to thrust forward wing so this is the wing from here to wing here and this is the major lift providing device of the airplane aileron ailerons are used to provide roll 
and the ailerons are placed on the either tips of the wing as it provides the rolling motion of the aircraft slats this aircraft doesn't have slats specifically but slats are the devices which are uh, placed on the wing and uh, it can be either leading edge slats or trailing edge slats and horizontal stabilizer so this portion is specifically known as the horizontal stabilizer and uh, it cannot be controlled but it is a stable uh, device or a part that's the name stabilizer horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer this portion is known as the uh, vertical stabilizer and uh, next pylon pylon is where uh, a device or a part which is used to mount the engine we could have seen in uh, aircrafts such as these here the engine is mounted on the wing and the connecting unit is known as pylon next is the flap flap is attached near to the fuselage so here we can see that this is the flap region on either side of the wing near the fuselage and this is a major lift providing device propeller as i said propeller is either attached in the forward portion of the aircraft and uh, this is a tractor uh, configuration or uh, that is puller configuration or uh, if the propeller is attached behind the aircraft it is a pusher configuration so next one is the spoilers spoilers are mounted on the wing surface and as the name suggests spoilers are used to spoil the lift or increase the drag for uh, helping the aircraft to slow down in cases of braking in fighter jets they are used to uh, provide or achieve sudden turns elevators elevators are attached behind the horizontal stabilizers of the aircraft and it is used to provide the pitch of the aircraft fuselage so this portion where the payload or the passengers are seated are known as fuselage and the rudder rudder is uh, the rear portion of the vertical stabilizer which is used to control the yaw the difference between the stabilizer and the control surface is that the control surface this is the control surface and this is the stabilizer so a control surface can be deflected where uh, in to achieve some particular kind of motion and the stabilizer cannot be turned or uh, controlled instead it is a stable device which provides the particular stability in that particular motion there are further parts such as landing gears landing gear fairings braces and uh, so on and so forth we have reached the summary of this session and we did know about airplane configurations from a co common perspective and we did know about uh, the airplane configurations from uh, specific uh, parts such as fuselage configurations wing configurations and etc further in the rear part of the session we did know about the airplane parts the common parts of an airplane and that's it for this session thank you Let's crack Gator Space.